Good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, what a beautiful day uh, to be coming uh, to the house of the Lord. Uh, so welcome to all of you who are joining us here this morning uh, in the sanctuary. And to those of you who are joining us uh, on the stream this morning, we welcome you as well. Uh, as we uh, gather here uh, this morning, uh, just a couple announcements. First of all, we will be taking Holy Communion this morning. Uh, if you are a, a, a guest or a visitor with us, uh, we practice an open communion table here at St. Michael. Uh, so if you are a baptized Christian, you're more than welcome to join us at the Lord's table this morning. Follow the usher's instructions. Uh, we, we have set up here uh, what we like to call the Holy Communion Buffet Table. Uh, so you will come forward, uh, you'll pick up a wafer, they're, they're spread out so that you won't be touching other wafers, you'll pick up a wafer and eat it, and then you'll go over and take a cup out of the, uh, the tray of uh, pre-filled glasses, drink your wine, and then there are trash cans on either side where you can throw your, away your plastic cup uh, when you are, are finished. Um, so uh, just follow the usher's instructions. If if you have a question, ask an usher. You can ask me. I'll be up front here as well. So um, don't, don't be embarrassed. Uh, uh, you know, we're all friends here. We can, um, we can uh, take care of that for you. All right. The second thing is, uh, today is the last day that you can order Easter flowers. Actually, you have till about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning uh, to order the Easter flowers. So uh, if you want to contact uh, the church office in the morning, you can order flowers uh, up to that time. All right, I think that's uh, all I have right now, other than to tell you that Easter is two weeks away. Do, do you realize that? In two weeks, it'll be Easter Sunday. Uh, right now, we plan on an 8.30 service and a 10.30 service. Um, if we find that uh, many of you are saying to us you're going to be bringing friends and so forth, we may add a third service if we feel we need to. So so if you're going to be coming and you're going to bring extra people, uh, be sure to let us know in the church office. Uh, it's not a reservation system. It's just you're letting us know your intentions so we would know if we would need to add a, a third service. All right. Okay, so we will begin our worship uh, here this morning uh, with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Would you please stand if you are able Let us pray. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may attend to your word, confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Let us take a, a few moments to reflect upon our own sinfulness, upon our own need to confess before God Almighty, and our own need to hear his words of mercy. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. I am sorry for them and repent of them, and I pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Forgive my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Amend my sinful ways that I might always experience life everlasting. 
In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Through this Holy Spirit, he cleanses us and gives us power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God, who has called us out of darkness into the splendor of his marvelous light. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Jesus Christ, And by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join me in singing our uh, opening hymn this morning, Jesus Loves Even Me. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Redeemer, in our weakness we have failed to be your messengers of forgiveness and hope to the world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit that we may follow your commands and proclaim your reign of love. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, we're going to do the peace again like we did last week. So uh, before you sit down, I'm just going to share the peace with you. And then I just want you to turn around and wave to everybody and say, uh, peace be with you. Okay? The peace of the Lord be with you always. Turn around and share the peace with everyone. You may be seated. It's kind of nice to turn around and see everybody, isn't it? See see at least a half of their face right so 
All right, well, uh, I'm continuing uh, my uh, Lenten sermon series uh, uh, today. Um, the, today's topic, uh, you know, of course, the, the series topic is Living the Word. And uh, we've been uh, using a memory verse. I've been having you memorize um, a particularly important verse uh, that has to do with the Word of God. And so we're going to uh, look at that verse and see how you're doing here. So uh, repeat this with me, if you would. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, very good. Um, It sounds like you you all are very familiar with this verse. Let's see how you do without words. All right, are we ready? Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, you're all doing really good with that verse. So I'm going to add a second memory verse now uh, to the repertoire. Uh, And this verse comes from Hebrews chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2. Uh, Just speak it with me if you would. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets, But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Let's say that again. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Okay. This morning, uh, for my sermon uh, lesson, I want to use uh, a reading from... Uh, the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans. Um, And I'm using selected verses from the last part of chapter 5 and the first part of chapter 6. St. Paul writes, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, how much more did God's grace that came by one man, Jesus Christ, Overflow to the many. Where sin increased, grace increased even more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. What then shall we say? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Certainly not. We are those who have died to sin. How then can we live in sin any longer? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning I want to tell you about a friend of mine. Um, It's a person... Uh, that I've known for many, many years, uh, since childhood, actually. And she is an amazing person. She is an amazing child of God. Um, And when I want to know what a mature Christian looks like, I look to this person. And I'm sure that each of you has a person or two like that in your life as well. This person, this friend of mine, is kind and gentle to everyone she meets. She never says or does anything mean or selfish. She is quick to give other people the benefit of the doubt. She's an empathizer, an encourager, a comforter. She deals with everyone with compassion. She is full of good cheer, optimism, and hope. Her faith in God is always unwavering. And I've looked at this person. I I won't tell you her name because I I want her to remain anonymous. Um, I've always looked at her and I thought to myself, I wish... I could be like that. Do you know people like that in your life that you look to them and go, wow, I just, 
I just wish I could be like they are. And I got to wondering, how does a person become like that? How, how does that happen? How does one become a mature disciple of Jesus, like my friend that I described? Well, this morning, my sermon title is called Being the Word. And I think that's how my friend, uh, if I could just describe her in one phrase, that's, that's how I would describe her. She is a being of the Word. She is the Word of Jesus. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that, that she is like Jesus. She, she behaves like Jesus. She speaks like Jesus. She talks like Jesus. How does that happen? How does one become like Jesus? Well, uh, as we saw in that second memory verse from from Hebrews chapter 1, God first decided to reveal himself through the Hebrew prophets. And that was all preparatory work for the coming of his son. God ultimately chose uh, to make his son Jesus be uh, the revelation of God himself to the world. What is that revelation? It's it's not words. Do Do you see that? The revelation of God to the world was not words. It was his son. It was a divine person revealed in human form. He, Jesus himself, is the revelation of God. Think about some of the scriptures uh, that are so familiar to us, especially the ones at Christmas time. They, they do a really good job of talking about how God came to earth and took flesh in Jesus Christ. We, we hear Jesus described as Emmanuel, God with us. And from John chapter 1, we hear these words about Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, to be the Word is to be like Jesus, because Jesus is the Word. It goes on and says, the the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Think about what that means. That means that God desired so much that we know who he was, that we know his heart, that we, we know his mind, that we, we know uh, his values and his character, that he sent his son to become a human being, to give us that example, to, to give us that revelation. So Jesus is the word. Be the Word. That's the title of my my sermon today. Be the Word. I think what I appreciate most about my friend that I described earlier in this message is that when I look at her, I'm really seeing Jesus. I'm seeing a, a reflection of who Jesus is. As Paul told us in that lesson from Romans, he said, uh, Uh, We have died to sin. How can we go on living in it? You see, my my friend is more than just a believer in Jesus. She's more than just a follower of Jesus. She has allowed the word of God, this, this person of Jesus, to come and be who she is, to, 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 to come and live in her. She has died to sin and evil, that, that old self of sin and evil, has been crucified with Christ. Uh, She no longer lives in it. Sin and evil have no power over her anymore. Indeed, what, what Paul told the Galatians is true for my friend, and indeed it is true for us. I have been crucified with Christ. And when Paul says I there, he says, he really means my sinful self has been crucified with Christ. 
it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So you see, the reason my friend can be such a mature Christian is because she has died to sin and has become a new creation in Christ, a new being who knows only one thing, and that is being the Word of God, being like Jesus. Nothing else is important to her. So how does one become a mature Christian disciple like my friend? Well, the scriptures are pretty clear about that. Um, First, you do the things that we've been talking about these last few weeks in this sermon series, living the word. You hear the word. It's the word itself has the power to change you. So through your reading of the word and studying of the word, through praying the word revealed in the Bible, by hearing the word proclaimed in worship uh, each Sunday, um, the word begins to work in your life. And at some point, you're able to trust that word. At some point, that word will change you. It will give you the confidence to believe that the word really does what it says. That it really does have the power to wash away your sin and to to save you from death and hell and the devil. And then you apply the word. You put that word into action in your life. And then you pray. You pray regularly. You pray often. You pray fervently that God will come and change your heart and renew your soul. And guess what happens? In the midst of that process, the Word does what it says. And sooner or later, you realize that Jesus has taken up residence in your heart. You realize that Jesus has become the most important thing in your life, the most important person, the most important vision in your life. Now, of course, this will take time. It's a work in progress. If you're not satisfied with where you're at in your faith life, that's okay because God isn't finished with you yet. I want to encourage you, hang in there. Don't give up. God is still at work in your life, changing you day by day. 2 Corinthians 4.16 tells us that as our outer bodies waste away, and we all recognize that, right, as we get older, right, our inner natures are renewed day by day. Think about that. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is busy renewing your spirit and and growing your spirit, maturing your spirit every single day. So give God the time. Give Him the opportunity. Give Him the space to do His work in your life. For our God desires that that you grow in faith. He desires that you may be built up in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let me read that again. God desires that you may be built up in the knowledge of His Son and become mature. That's the normal process of being a disciple in Jesus. God will move you from infancy through childhood to spiritual maturity so that you may attain to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. It's like Paul is trying to to tell us in in human words something that that can't be explained, that, you know, this what God wants to give us is so amazing that it it can't be explained, even with all those words. I mean, that's that's a huge mess of words there, isn't it? Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Try to wrap your your minds around that. But that's what God desires to give 
each of you. Why? For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. See, it, it comes down to love. God loves you so much that he's willing to do this for you. Are you willing to trust him in that? I hope and pray you are. Give him a chance. Give him the space. Give him the opportunity. And he will make you a new creation in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you uh, join me uh, in confessing our faith, the faith in which we were baptized, the faith in which we live? Uh, We'll use the Apostles' Creed this morning to do that. Confess with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As we uh, prepare to pray, let me uh, ask you, uh, first of all, are there uh, any uh, joys that you would like to uh, share with the congregation this morning? Birthdays? Anniversaries? Thank you. All right. Um, I have quite a few uh, prayer requests here. Um, I'm going to go through them first, uh, the ones that I have, and then I'll ask you for for whatever prayer request you have. Um, We want to pray for Nancy, uh, who is uh, Roger Brushhaber's sister. Um, She's having some complications from hip surgery. We want to pray for Carter, a friend of the Brushhaber's, a one-year-old who had to have a, a tumor removed from his brain. Uh, We pray for Cynthia Reichert, uh, Cynthia's Pastor Warren's wife, and uh, she had um, eye surgery. She had a detached retina, uh, though Pastor Warren said that the surgery was was successful. Uh, So we pray for healing and recovery there. Also, um, yesterday uh, morning, uh, one of our members, uh, uh, Ernie Leroy, uh, great saint here at St. Michael, uh, usually attends the second service. Um, he passed away from, from heart failure. Uh, so our condolences to, to Jan and, and uh, to the uh, rest of his family. Um, and we want to keep them in our prayers today. Uh, his funeral service is tentatively set for uh, next Saturday, 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. Uh, but I have not confirmed that just yet with the uh, funeral home. Uh, So we'll get more information about his funeral out to you later uh, in the service. Also, we have some additional requests uh, from the stream. Uh, We'll pray for Pat Barron. Uh, We'll pray for uh, Pastor Judy Gill's uh, friend, Scott, who's having surgery. And we'll pray for Chris Becker's sister, Catherine. Um, uh, So it says here that she long passed away. So she must be asking us just for prayer for family and friends and to remember remember Catherine. Um, So we'll keep Chris and her family in our prayers today. Any uh, additions uh, uh, beyond that to our prayer list here this morning? Yes. Okay, we'll pray for Aaron. Is that A or E? E. So it's a, a female Aaron. Okay, we'll pray for Aaron. All right. Others? All right, very good. Let's bow our heads and pray. 
Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, every week we come in here and we're just astounded uh, by the, the uh, depths of your love for us, uh, by the, uh, the efforts that you make to reach out and make a connection with us, your human creation. We are bounded by space and time as human beings. We are bounded by flesh and blood. But you are unbounded. And so your spirit comes. And it reaches out to touch us. And, and it's up to us, really, to open our eyes and to, to recognize its presence. To, to seek that presence. We don't always do a good enough job of that, Lord. Oftentimes we, we fail to see you working in our midst even when you are. So we ask for forgiveness, Lord, for our lack of faith in those times. We also give you thanks and praise that even in the midst of our frailty, you are there, you are reaching out, you are, are touching us, you are, are uh, uh, walking with us, you are guiding us, you are directing us, even when we can't even see you or recognize your presence in our midst or even when we're not even looking for you. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that you never give up on us. We thank you that when we turn to you, you are there. So, Lord, know uh, how much we appreciate that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come here today because we want to be more like Jesus. We want to hear your word. We want to, to cherish your word. And more so, we want to live by your word. We want it to be the most important thing in our life. We want to know it intimately. We want to, to base our lives on it. And so we just pray, Father, you will continue to proclaim that word to us. That it will come to us uh, in in the Bible, that it will come to us in worship, that it will come to us in the, the comfort and consolation uh, that we receive from one another uh, as, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us to never be afraid to speak the word to one another. Help us to never be afraid to, to bring that word to bear in our lives and to share that word with others, not just brothers in Christ, but brothers in humanity. There are so many people out in the world that are lost, that are hurting, uh, that need to hear a word from you, God. Inspire your people. Inspire these people gathered right here today in this place or, or joining us uh, through the Internet. Inspire each of us to be committed to taking that word to the world, to taking that word to our friends and our neighbors and our coworkers, that they may hear your saving word and turn from their sin and live as you desire for all your human creation. Lord, inspire us. Uh, give us the courage we need to be that kind of people, to be the word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to uh, believe in the word about prayer. You said to your disciples, you said to us, uh, that we should seek and we will find, to ask and it will be given, to knock and the door will be opened. And so we're, we're seeking, we're asking, we're knocking, Lord, this day. Especially on behalf of those on our prayer list that we send out each week on the internet and, and also those that we mentioned here this morning, Nancy, and Carter, and Cynthia, the family and friends of Ernie Leroy, for Aaron and Pat and Scott and for Chris and her family as they, they remember and cherish their memories of Catherine, their family member who's long passed away. Lord, uh, these people have special need of your presence and your power today. Go to them, strengthen their faith. Give them the healing and the wholeness that they require. And we thank you, Lord that you pour your healing out into our lives. We are all broken. We are all injured in some way or another by, by this world and by, uh, by what happens to us in this world. And 
And uh, we're all in need of that healing. So, so be especially with these folks that we mentioned, but, but, but be generous with your healing spirit. May it, may it spread across to all of us. We pray especially during this pandemic, Lord, that you would protect us from the infection, uh, from the virus. We, we pray, Father, that you would uh, heal those who uh, uh, are infected by the virus. We pray for comfort and consolation for those who've lost loved ones because of the virus. But we remember also, Lord, that there are many other illnesses and diseases that continue uh, to uh, rack our world, continue to uh, inflict uh, the human race. Um, so we lift uh, those people up as well. Be, bring your healing power upon all who have uh, diseases and injury, uh, all who are recovering uh, uh, in one way or another. Uh, we, we pray, Father, uh, for uh, consolation for all who have lost loved ones. Um, and as we know, as, as Chris reminds us here today, um, that pain of death, that, that sting of death that we experience in our flesh does not go away uh, uh, immediately. Um, it may never go away. We may always experience that sting, sting of death when we've lost a dear loved one. Um, but we know, Lord, that we do not grieve as those who have no hope, uh, for we have our hope in Jesus Christ. And uh, that's enough. So, Lord, may it be enough for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we come to the table today, may we hear those words anew, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, and may it remind us that Jesus died for us. May it re remind us that, that Jesus was willing to die for us. He was willing to become our sin that we might become the righteousness of God. What a beautiful, what a, what a beautiful thing that he did for us. Lord, we do not take it for granted. May we hear those words anew. May we know with certainty that our sins are forgiven and our relationship with you has been made right again through his blood and sacrifice. And may that change our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand if you are able? Would you uh, pray with me our offertory prayer? Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Then our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink. Saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Blood shed for you and all people. For the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it. Do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Just so you know, um, we do have a, a dish on the end, uh, the front end here of each of these tables. Um, there are gluten-free wafers in the, that dish. There's also fish uh, for uh, smaller children who have not uh, taken training in Holy Communion uh, as of yet. Okay? All righty. body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, Amen. the body of Christ, the blood of Christ shed for you. Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ given for you. Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ for you. Body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The 
blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. 
This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Would you please stand? Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and you might the wills of those whom you have fed with this one heavenly food. This we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace now and always. Amen. Will you join me in singing our closing hymn? Uh, our sending hymn is How Firm a Foundation. Thank you for joining us here this morning, both those of you in the, the pews and those of you on the stream. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.